Welcome back one more time. We're doing the Gaussian mixture model for with expectation maximization. And we were just thinking about the interpretation of these conditional probabilities here. So it was the conditional probability that z equals ek given x. And so people sometimes refer to this as the responsibility, or the, more precisely, the responsibility taken by the kth component in the mixture and so when you if you think about sort of this this example if x was here then the responsibility the probability of this guy well i mean it might not be intuitive it's probably intuitively clear but you know to be rigorous you would have to check the formula but it's going to be higher for this one i mean assuming it depends on what these mixing components are i guess also but if these mixing components are say like say say equal then it's then it looks like it should be it's going to be higher for this one so this guy is going to take more responsibility for this point than this one so if you think by analogy with k means k means was taking a hard assignment of a point to one of the clusters and here it's sort of a soft assignment it's a certain certain responsibility being taken by this guy for this point and and some responsibility but less less responsibility taken by the other guy Okay, so that was just the sort of intuition. And way, way, way back down here, we, we are computing the, the update formulas for EM. And we've got one more to do. And it is, it is this matrix one. So this is our sufficient, our last part of the sufficient statistics. It's the sum over i, z, i, k, x, i, x, i transpose. So part three, sum over i, z, i, k, x, i, x, i transpose. And there should be random variables. Let me make that clear. z, i, k, x, i, x, i transpose given x equals little x equals the expectation this is under theta zero this is under theta same thing random z i k x i x i transpose random and let's do this one again this one's probably i think going to be easier just like before and yes it is so the expectation moves through and just like before in the case of the vector valued one we just get the x the conditional expectation of zik given x these x's come out and we just get the sum over i r i k x i x i transpose the random x's get set to the little the random x i's get set to little x i because of the conditioning so that one's easy and how about this one? Well, we're going to take a similar, similar approach to before. We did this, this um, we broke the expectation up into a expectation of a conditional expectation. Oh, we already have the sum. Z i k i k x i x i transpose. Okay. Oh, sorry. Given z i k and now let's do the same sort of thing as we did here you know just like before here when we only have to worry about the case when z i k equals one because when it's zero this is just zero so let's think about that one so let's think about this conditional expectation when z i k equals one Well, when it's one, this we can just forget about this. This just is one. And so, what is the what is the conditional expectation, or what is the yeah, what is the conditional expectation of this thing, this xi xi transpose? How the heck are we gonna? How we're, we're gonna what are we gonna do for that? Well, if you if you know your your covariance matrices, then you recognize. So this is an aside. Let me make just an aside here. For any random vector 
say y, all right, we're not using y for anything, the covariance matrix of y equals the expected value of y, y transpose minus the expected value of y times the expected value of y transpose. And this is just follows by the definition of the covariance matrix. If you multiply these out uh, and, and the definition of covariance, multiply these out and then element wise, you get the right thing. So that, that's a little distracting there. So this thing, what is, so we just need to think about what is the covariance matrix for the conditional distribution given z i k equals one, the conditional distribution on x i, and then we will just be able to we solve for this, it'll just be the covariance matrix plus the mean times the mean transpose. So what is the conditional distribution? Well, that's just exactly, remember, we'll go back up here, back up to our model one more time. That's just, again, that's just this, this normal distribution. Given that zik equals, equals 1, then xi is normally distributed with mean mu k and covariance ck. So the covariance matrix is CK and the, mu the mean is mu K. So wait one more time. I'm almost out of space. Uh, the, this thing equals the covariance matrix CK plus, remember it's plus because we move this over, mu K, mu K transpose. This conditional distribution. All right, so, so let's use that now. See if we can use that here. This was, let me just, uh, let's continue this over here. This equals the sum over i. Remember when zik was zero, it just dropped out. So it's the probability that zik equals one. I'll put that again under theta times this conditional expectation given zik equals 1. And that we found was this thing, ck plus mu k mu k transpose. And this, just like before, this was alpha k, where alpha k, it was the alpha for this theta. So what do we get? We get the i just makes an n, so we get n alpha k c or the, the sum makes an n, n alpha k, c k, plus mu k mu transpose, mu k transpose. And we would like to solve this for, for c k. So first let's do the trick again of getting rid of alpha k. Alpha k was just like before, alpha k was nk over n. So this becomes nk times ck plus mu k mu k transpose. <coughs> Losing my voice. And now we'd like to solve this for ck. So let's do that. And I think we have just about got it. ck equals, we move the nk over, and then move the mu k mu, mu k transpose over we get one over nk, sum over i, rik, xi, xi transpose, minus mu k, mu k transpose. And that, and maybe just to be clear here, this is separate from that. And that is our update formula for the covariance matrix. And so we've got, since we already have, you know, we have mu k, we've already solved for mu k here using some of the earlier conditions. Then we can just plug in whatever we get for mu k into this, this equation here. And we know r k, of course we know the x's also. And we know n k. n k was the sum of the r i k's over i. All right, so this is our update. Right, so so we did, so maybe just to to recap here to show that that this is what we wanted. 
for EM, for the uh, this formulation of EM for for uh, exponential families, we wanted to solve this equation, this or rather this set of equations. This was an equation for each j, and we wanted to set simultaneously solve that that set of equations for theta, assuming that we know theta zero, and that would give us our update because then we would have that would be like if that was theta zero, this would be theta one. And then we would put theta 1, and we would get theta 2, theta 2, and we would get theta 3, and so on. And so that's exactly what we did. We wrote down these equations over each, you know, each j. We sort of grouped them together into groups of j that were, that were convenient to, to work, work with. And then we solved those equations. We did it. We got, we got theta, right? Because theta was, was, mu was uh, alpha, all the mu's, and it was all the c's. And we got down here, we got all the alphas. This is just, you know, alpha, alpha was just alpha one up to alpha m. So we got all the alphas, right? This was the definition of nk here. And this was, maybe I'll put this whole thing here. We had all together this, this was the definition of rk was this. Our uh, RIK was this, and the definition of NK was this. Definition. Definition. So we got all the alphas, we got all the mu's, and we got all the c's, all the covariance matrices. So we've got it. So that's it. That's that's the that's EM for the Gaussian mixture model. And it's so I mean it was some work to, to derive it, but this is just 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 very easy to, to implement. Because all you do is just you just iteratively you solve these these equations, and um, once you've solved them for one step, the only thing you have to really, I mean, you know, to to to, uh, to you have to update the RIKs to to use in the next step. But that's easy because that was just this calculation way back up here. This was the RIK thing here. This would be like. R I K if this was X I and um, and that's easy to compute you can just analytically compute that then you so you get your R I K's for the next step and you're you're off to the races all right so that's E M for the Gaussian mixture model and um, and let me make one remark here uh, one thing that might be a little bit that w is a little bit subtle about this is that these alphas you know, I said when when we were deriving this formulation of EM, this 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 formulation, that the alpha that the uh, the theta couldn't have any any constraints, sort of. And these alphas have to sum to one. These are these define a PMF, right? And so that's a constraint that you know you would think that we would have to take into account when we were doing the the maximization uh, step in some sense. But it turns out that, that we did take them into account in an implicit way. So in a sort of very subtle way, that constraint was already incorporated into the derivation of this result. And that won't always be the case. But in this case, it was. And the reason is because that constraint was implicitly included in the... Uh, in the normalization constant. So here, this was right. This was this is good. This was the form of the exponential family, and theta. Um, we didn't when we did the maximization of this originally. We didn't have a constrained maximization. But it turns out that the constant here, in this case for these mu for these alpha k's, this constant acted as a Lagrange multiplier in that maximization. The normalization constant acted as a Lagrange multiplier and that's why it actually it actually was a, a constrained maximization. And that's why it worked in this this special case. But this is I want to emphasize a special case and that won't always that doesn't necessarily always happen. Okay, so that's it. So that's EM for the Gaussian mixture model. We've got it and uh, and I hope that the, I hope you found that interesting to see an alternate way to derive this.